Once the chest tube is in its desired location and depth, a suture must be used to secure the chest tube to the chest wall. Using O-Silk, the suture may be placed across the incision to ensure adequate seal. When securing the chest tube, it is important to wrap the chest tube in both directions using the silk. The previous sandal tie is no longer accepted as the chest tube can become loose. When securing the chest tube, it's essential to secure it tightly, enough to cause an actual dimple in the chest tube, however not overly so to occlude the chest tube. The chest tube is now ready to be connected to our drainage system. To prepare the chest tube, cut it at the distal end at an oblique angle. When priming the drainage system, it is essential to clamp the chest tube thereby preventing a sucking chest wound. Now that the chest tube is in place, secured, and clamped off, it is time to prime your drainage system. Using a standard draining system, such as a Pluravac or an atrium, the first step is to connect the reservoir to the chest tube. Once that is connected, you can then connect the suction to the wall and ensure that the suction is set to minus 20 centimeters of water. Next, you must prep the air leak gauge using sterile water. The drainage system is now primed and you may release the Kelly clamp on the chest tube. Daily management of the chest tube involves a number of things. First is inspection of the wound to look for signs of infection or hematoma. Second is to chart the amount of fluid drained into the reservoir chamber of the drainage system noted here, 100 cc's of serosanguineous fluid. Third is to ensure 
that the suction pressure is set to the desired level and that the suction is still connected to the source. Typical drainage systems are set to negative 20 centimeters of water. Finally, have the patient cough to check for air leaks in the chest tube. This will be shown as bubbles in the air leak reservoir shown here. If your chest tube is draining a fluid, as in a hemothorax or pleural effusion, then in general, only consider removing the chest tube when it is draining around 100 to 300 cc per day. In the event of a pneumothorax, consider removing the chest tube when the insult has been resolved and there is no plan for positive pressure ventilation. Before removing the chest tube, you must create an occlusive dressing. An occlusive dressing is used to prevent re-entry of air back into the pleural space. You require a large tegaderm, Vaseline gauze, and some 4x4 regular gauze. First thing, take the regular gauze and fold it into a 1 inch by 1 inch square. Place it directly in the center of the tegaderm. Then, again forming a 1 inch by 1 inch square, fold the Vaseline gauze and place it on top of the regular gauze. You have now created your occlusive dressing. Now that you have your occlusive dressing and the chest tube is ready for removal, the goal when removing a chest tube is to create a positive pressure inside the thoracic cavity. This positive pressure will aid in forcing any residual air out of the thorax, thereby preventing a pneumothorax. To effectively do so, you must practice the process of pulling out a chest tube with the patient repetitive times. So sir, if you could please follow with me. Prior to pulling this chest tube out, what I want you to do, take a deep breath in and then blow out through your mouse, mouth with pursed lips. So it looks like this. Okay. Can you practice that with me? Or we're going to count to one, two, three. I want you to take a large breath in and blow it through pursed lips, okay? One, two, three. Good, and you can relax there. It's important to have the patient blow it through pursed lips as it increases the thoracic pressure as well as you can hear that the patient is in fact doing the maneuver. When pulling the tube out, it is again important to warn the patient that it may feel uncomfortable or even painful. Again, warn the patient that this time we will be taking the chest tube out. Okay, sir, this is the time we're actually going to take the chest tube out. Okay, are you ready? Ready. Okay. With the occlusive dressing in your non-dominant hand, have it ready directly by the incision site that the moment the chest tube is released, you can put pressure and occlude the incision. Okay? Are we ready, sir? Mm -hmm. So again, we will count to one, two, three, take a large breath in, and blow out through our pursed lips. We'll remove the tube at the maximum of his inspiration, just as he starts to exhale. Okay, are we ready? One, two, three, And you can relax there, sir. Keeping pressure with your opposite hand, with your non-dominant hand, ensure that the tegaderm is pressed down on all four sides around our occlusive dressing. If need be, you can reinforce with further dressings.
Thank you for watching our video on tube thoracostomy. A few clinical pearls to remember are Number one, preparation is key. Make sure to have your equipment ready and to have help on hand. This is particularly important in the trauma setting. Number two, lad marking a chest tube involves the mid to anterior auxiliary line and the fourth to fifth intercostal space. Remember, our incisional level is one intercostal space above or below our desired chest tube level. Number three, beware the neurovascular bundle, which lies on the inferior aspect of the rib. Number four, always have a drainage system ready. If you do not have a drainage system and you insert a chest tube, you've just created a sucking chest wound. Number five, daily management of the chest tube involves checking for air leaks and ensuring that the suction is connected. Number six, chest tube removal. Remember these three P's. Positive intrathoracic pressure, practice chest tube removal with the patient, and practice chest tube removal with the patient. Thank, Thank you. you.